Let's talk today about features of atypical thoracic vertebrae. In order to be successful in this part of our anatomy video series, let's briefly address issues and concerns that we had while studying typical thoracic vertebrae. So, in front of me here, we have a typical thoracic vertebra, which fits into a range of T5 to T8 vertebrae. And right away, we can see presence of two different demi facets that are seen on the superior and inferior border of vertebral bodies. Of course, we can also see this proper and typical position of articular superior processes and facets that are pointing posteriorly or backwards. Also, what is a typical characteristic of thoracic vertebrae is their fairly long transverse process on which we can see here facet that will enable contact with a rib, so that is going to be costotransverse joint, and regardless which number this thoracic vertebra is, we know that it is going to make a contact here with the same number rib. Also, additional feature of typical thoracic vertebrae As we know from before, typical thoracic vertebrae are those ones that are in the range of 2nd to 9th thoracic vertebrae. Therefore, atypical ones are 1st, 10th, 11th, and 12th, and in this video we will have a chance to show them all. As we know from before, typical thoracic vertebrae are those ones that are in the range of 2nd to 9th thoracic vertebrae. Those ones that are atypical and that we will see in this video presentation are T1, T10, T11, and T12. So to start with something, let's look first at the upper three thoracic vertebrae. So this is first thoracic, then the second, and the third. The lower two are of course typical. So the only one which is atypical is the first thoracic vertebra. Let's take a look at T1 by itself. This is first thoracic vertebra, so let's address those areas that would make it atypical. What all books will agree, and maybe this is the best for us to also start using those features as features of atypical thoracic vertebra, is number one that it has the full size facet here that will be used to make costovertebral joint with a rib number one. But at the lower end of a vertebral body, we can see here it is fairly small, so it's not right away detectable. Inferior demi facet to which rib number two will attach together with the superior demi facet of the thoracic vertebra number two. If we go more laterally on the transverse process, here we will find another full size facet for attachment of rib number one. The only difference is going to be that first joint we mentioned today was costovertebral, and this was this is where costotransverse joint will be formed. In addition to what was already mentioned, one can see also that thoracic vertebra number one doesn't have excessively long, nor it has spinous process which is pointing downward. It would be better to describe it as running practically in a horizontal transverse plane. Additional thing that one can also observe while seeing the body of first thoracic vertebra is those elevated sides that were named in a cervical group as ansinate processes. No surprise because thoracic vertebra 1 is practically one of this vertebrae that are in a transition between cervical and the thoracic group, so some of these features appear to be a bit of residuals that we would acquire from cervical group of vertebrae onto uppermost thoracic vertebrae. Other than that, we would already see position of superior articular processes, left and right sided, 
and orientation of facets that when we see the camera, when we see it on camera straight from behind, orientation of facets is practically in a posterior direction. I'm holding in my hand first and second thoracic vertebra. Second thoracic vertebra is already typical, but the reason for which I wanted to capture this moment is to show you that the body of T2 vertebra also exhibits, but this time much smaller, uncinate processes. So this would be a good example where two vertebrae come together just to zoom in and to point out to another area of contact being made and that is what is called the oncovertebral joint. I'll try to hold it like this and to point out with my forceps that that additional contact between two vertebrae is actually to be made here. On the very top of the screen, this vertebra here, it is still vertebra T9. Let's remove it from the picture so we can easily manipulate vertebrae 10, 11 and 12 and to show why they become listed as atypical thoracic vertebrae. First one we have here, thoracic vertebra number 10. As previously mentioned, it only shows superior demi facet, but has no inferior demi facet for attachment of rib 11. Thoracic vertebra 11 will have a full size facet for attachment of the same number of rib, which is here, and we're going to find something very similar and comparable in a form of full-size facet on thoracic vertebra number 12 for the attachment of lowest rib. It was explained in a section about ribs that last ribs, ear ribs 11 and 12, also known as floating ribs, are much shorter than other ribs and also they have a little bit less of a curvature. As a result of change in the curvature of lower ribs, as well as shortening of the transverse processes of thoracic vertebrae 11 and 12, we would not find on thoracic vertebrae 11 facet on the transverse process, neither are we going to have a chance to see something similar on transverse And finally, as we're addressing all the different changes, we understand that this is the last four of thoracic vertebrae. Say they already showed their intention to successfully undergo a bit of transition. As one can see here, their spinous processes are also becoming significantly shorter. Also, the angle of their descent is nowhere close to what is, was in the middle part, T5 to T8. Spinous processes are running more horizontally, they become rectangular, and on the basis of the last thoracic vertebra, T12, and observing just its spinous process, it would be quite difficult to distinguish whether it is thoracic vertebra or lumbar on the basis of its spinous process. Only when finding facet for attachment of rib, then we can confirm that this is still thoracic vertebra. In this case, it is thoracic vertebra number 12.